Now, there is a curious argument alleging major recent collisions in the solar system proposed by a psychiatrist named Emanuel Velikovsky in 1950. He suggested that an object of planetary mass, which he called a comet, uh, was somehow produced in the Jupiter system. He doesn't say exactly how it's produced, but uh, maybe it's spat out of Jupiter. Anyway, however it was made some 3,500 years ago, he imagines, it made repeated close encounters with Mars, with the Earth-Moon system, having as uh, entertaining biblical consequences the uh, parting of the Red Sea so that uh, Moses and the Israelites could uh, safely avoid uh, the host of Pharaoh and the stopping of the Earth's rotation at the moment that uh, Joshua commanded the sun to stand still in Gibeon. Uh, he also imagined that there was extensive flooding and the volcanoes all over the Earth at that time. Well, then after a very complicated uh, game of interplanetary billiards is completed, Velikovsky proposed that this comet entered into a stable, almost perfectly circular orbit, becoming the planet Venus, which he claimed never existed until then. Now, these ideas are almost certainly wrong. There is no objection in planetary astronomy to collisions. We've seen collision fragments and evidence throughout the solar system. The problem is with recent and major collisions. In any scale model of the solar system like this, it's impossible to have both the sizes of the planets and the sizes of their orbits to the same scale, because then the planets would be too small to see. If the planets were really to scale in such a model as grains of dust, it would then be entirely clear that a comet entering the inner solar system would have a negligible chance of colliding with a planet in only a few thousand years. Moreover, Venus is a rocky and metallic hydrogen poor world, whereas Jupiter, the place that Velikovsky imagines it comes from, is made of almost nothing but hydrogen. There's no energy source in Jupiter to eject planets or comets. If one did enter the inner solar system, there is no way it could stop the Earth from rotating. And if it could, there's no way the Earth could start up rotating again at anything like 24 hours a day. There's no geological evidence for flooding and volcanism 3,500 years ago. Babylonian astronomers observed Venus in its present stable orbit uh, before Velikovsky said it existed. And so on. There are many hypotheses in science which are wrong. That's perfectly all right. It's the aperture to finding out what's right. Science is a self-correcting process. To be accepted, new ideas must survive the most rigorous standards of evidence and scrutiny. The worst aspect of the Velikovsky affair is not that uh, many of his ideas were wrong or silly or in gross contradiction to the facts. Rather, the worst aspect is that some scientists attempted to suppress Velikovsky's ideas. The suppression of uncomfortable ideas may be common in uh, religion or in politics, but it is not the path to knowledge, and there's no place for it in the endeavor of science. We do not know beforehand where fundamental insights will arise from about our mysterious and lovely solar system. And the history of our study of the solar system shows clearly that accepted and conventional ideas are often wrong and that fundamental insights can arise from the most unexpected sources.